Hi there, Color Crest friends. This is Margaret Bird, and I'm so excited to welcome you into my dye studio, otherwise known as my kitchen. Today on Color Quest, I would like to look at an incredible earth pigment in the way of iron. Iron can do magical things in our dye studio. And the first thing I'd like to look at is how we welcome rust from iron in order to make prints. So grab your rusty bits in the back of your garage or out in your backyard, and let's look at making rust prints on paper. So over the years, I have brought iron into my dye practice because it does all kinds of incredible things. You've seen many videos here where we've looked at ferrous sulfate, which is a form of iron, in order to do things like modify colors, to satin colors, and even as a mordant. Today we're going to look at iron that is rusted and then capturing that rust onto fiber. We'll be looking at paper exclusively today, but over the next few weeks, we'll be looking at the magic of iron on different kinds of substrates, including different kinds of fibers, silk and cotton, and we'll bring paper back in from time to time. I had the great fortune of working with rust while I was on my artist residency this past year in Svalbard. There was a lot of rusty metal left behind from all kinds of human activity and I created my first series of rust prints both on paper and textile and I absolutely loved it. So what I'd like to do today is start off simply by looking at rust as something that you probably have around your own home that can be in the form of any kind of iron steel product that has been exposed to water. And that's what happens is that moisture interacts with iron that's in steel that creates that oxidation process to bring about rust. Now, Let's take a look at the supplies we're gonna use in today's video. And I bet you, you have most of these right in your house now. So here is our set of supplies that we're gonna to need today. First of all, we're gonna need a container or two because we're going to need to soak some things as well as cover our prints up in order to sit and cure. I'm going to be working with watercolor paper here today. We're going to be working with distilled vinegar as our acid, which will help break down the rust from the iron that we're using. And we're also going to hasten the oxidation by introducing salt, which is an electrolyte, and that creates an ion shift that allows the rust to come about quickly. We will need a spray bottle in order to put our vinegar and water mixture onto our paper. I have gloves here because when you're handling rust, you should be using some kind of gloves. I just am using work gloves. I have my rusted pieces. I have nails and screws and things that have had time out in the world to get rusted. I have scissors that I'm gonna need in order to cut this plastic. Now this is repurposed plastic from different shipping things that I get. We're gonna be using this to create an airtight environment for our prints. And then I have a weighted bag here to apply pressure onto our prints so that they have a chance for the metal to have contact and create a print onto this paper. So let's get going. 
So any rusty metal is gonna work for this. You can also create rusty material by spritzing some iron with vinegar and water and just setting it outside to interact with the environment. The reason I'm using watercolor paper is because we're going to be getting this paper wet in order to create that environment for the print itself. And it can handle water really well, actually. You will need to handle it a little bit more carefully than you would with textile, of course, but watercolor paper is pretty strong. We're gonna start off today by soaking our watercolor paper in order to create a uniform environment of a damp paper to start the process. Now, as I have this paper soaking just for a minute, I'm gonna be making up my vinegar bath and that is going to be two parts vinegar to one part water. I'm just gonna eyeball it because it doesn't really matter exact proportions, just so you get a rough, sort of heavier on the vinegar than the water. So I'll be putting about that much vinegar in and about half that volume of water on top. All right, there we go. There's our vinegar water. Now I have my vinegar water ready and I'm going to take the paper out of the water and just blot it dry so that it is damp but doesn't have any excess moisture on the top and then we can start building our prints themselves. So what is the plastic for? The plastic is going to be used underneath and in between as well as on top of each print that I want to make in order to keep it sealed and keep the air out. We want our rusted prints to be sitting in this wet environment for at least 12 hours. And that is to just promote that additional rust coming, the breaking down of the rust from the iron, and then the transfer of that onto the paper. I'm repurposing this plastic. If you do not want to use repurposed plastic, you can choose to use a damp towel, or something that you can keep that moisture in. So these were pieces that I've used before and what's beautiful about doing this is that all of these rusty materials can be used more than once. So save everything after you use it and next time it may create a completely different print. So I've cut my plastic and I have it in the bottom of this bin which will be perfect for having a nice environment that can stay damp and then I will just figure out a way in which I want to put these nails in. I can do it very methodically or I can just throw pieces together. I'll probably do some combination of the two. This is where you can decide what you like. If you want something that is more uniform or variations. I do want them not to overlap each other, however, because they won't be touching the paper if I do that. So I will try to find a way in which these can be touching the paper and next to each other to create a finished design. Now, as you can see, I have these little bits of rusted pieces that have fallen from these nails and screws. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this on top. Of course, you don't have to. I just think it's gonna add a little bit of interest. So there you have our very simple design. Of course, you could not put as many in. You could go at an angle. You could choose to make them very uniform. That's completely up to you. So have fun and, and be creative. Now I'm going to take my vinegar water and I'm going to spray a generous amount of the vinegar water on top. And I'm going to be sprinkling on some kosher salt as well. Not going to be afraid to put a nice layer of salt on there to create that electric environment. Now I'm going to take a second piece of paper. This piece of paper hasn't had the spritz of vinegar water. So I'll quickly do that and then flip it over. 
so that, that vinegar is on that side as well and I have my first bundle I'm going to wrap the plastic over the top and start my next design I'm gonna go ahead and a little douse of that vinegar water there as well so this time I'm gonna be using these brackets I think I will do a design that goes the opposite direction of my other one going up and down doing something a little bit different with these pieces all right there I have my second design you can already see a little bit of the rust that is coming off but that may or may not stick because we need the pressure pressing the paper into the metal there's my vinegar water and again some kosher salt on top nice healthy sprinkle and then another piece on top of that that we are going to coat with the vinegar okay there we go piece number two we're gonna put a new piece of plastic in put that one over add some more here to start and we will do our last piece of paper which I will not put a second top piece this will be just a single one I'm gonna work with some of the larger pieces just came off of that one just gonna keep moving the pieces around until I find a design that I like and so we'll try that feel free to go off the paper I'm leaving some of these little rusty pieces that have fallen off I might drop a few more in I have one tiny screw maybe I'll find a place for that in this design maybe somewhere there yeah I think I'll do something like that okay spray with our vinegar water salt and cover it up press it down and then we're gonna add this weight which allows there to be pressure on the pieces which will help make that contact between the paper and the nails I'm just gonna let this sit okay I have let these sit overnight I checked them this morning and I decided to add a little bit more vinegar water and salt to the top layer it appeared a little dry and I wasn't quite satisfied with the transfer of the print so I just did a little spritz a little salt covered it back up so if you pull up the print and you feel like it needs a little bit more time or a little bit more of that acid and electrolyte to complete that print or deepen that print for you go ahead and do it now it's time to take everything out and they need to sit and fully dry overnight so let's see what we got in the way of prints all right so here's that top piece i'm just going to carefully remove the pieces of metal and you can see that it is still wet underneath so i'm going to be very gentle in taking these things off we got a really nice print there as well as moving them out so i don't move too much of that liquid around although it's an interesting print so let's move that out and we'll open the next one so there i moved it on to just paper towel we're going to let it dry and actually a lot of that liquid didn't even really move so we'll see when it dries and we rinse it how much of that comes out let's open up the next piece these are the ones I did that were double prints meaning that I had a piece of paper on top and on the bottom so we'll see 
if that made an interesting print oh that looks super nice move that over there and then i will remove these pieces carefully oh we got some really nice prints on this one it's definitely still wet got a lot of really nice transfer of the rust onto this paper some of that will definitely stay on the paper would be my guess and they're going to be different even though they were using the same pieces so it's almost like we're getting a ghost print so we'll move that one over all right the last one Let's see what kind of a print we got on this side Ooh. oh i really like that one it's really dark now of course they're wet they're gonna have to dry and we still have to rinse them but that is a really pretty print and then this one with all the nails again carefully removing these let's see if we got some prints here it looks like we did you can see where some of that vinegar water pooled just gonna give me some kind of a dark line maybe i would think about having a little less but could also have left these here to dry with the nails on top but since we just removed them oh well now we gotta live with that just because this is here doesn't mean that it's going to adhere to the paper in this way so we just have to wait and see when it dries i might try to dab a little bit of this rust water up to I don't know just see if that separates a little bit more from some of these more pooled areas and yeah really different effect from the bottom piece and the top piece so it's cool to do both sides I have to say and it does make a different print look at that all right we'll let these dry and step to the rinsing step I don't want to pick up too much, but just a little of the excess. There we go. That's probably enough for now. You can see there's a little bit of the rust that stuck to the plastic, but I'm going to be reusing them. So we'll wash this away from the plastic and then use these pieces again for future rust dyeing. The same goes with our pieces of metal all of these can be used again so what I will do is actually rinse them with some soapy water and let them dry and pack them away for the next prints in the bottom of that bin you're gonna have some residual rust pieces and you don't want to put those down your drain so I am simply filtering them through a paper towel and a strainer so that I can catch all of those metal pieces and some of the larger pieces I will probably keep as little accent flex that I can use in the future. And there they are, all dry and ready for the next step. We need to wash these pieces in order to remove any rust that hasn't stuck to the paper as well as get rid of the salt which you can see lingers on the paper itself so we have two baths here one with soapy water and one with just clean water and i'm going to gently take each one of these and put it into the soapy water picking it up moving it around a little bit and then putting it into the rinse bucket. We'll continue to do that with all these pieces. Well, you can see that we had a really good contact with the rust to the paper because the water that we're using isn't really turning brownish, which is the rust that doesn't stick would be going off into the water. That's not happening, which means we got some really great contact 
with the rust to the paper itself. So we're gonna get the print as well as a lot of the shadows left over. So I'm gonna let these sit now and dry. Wow, so bright, I love it. Okay, everything's dry, let's take a look at it. So I really enjoyed the fact that I did the double print. I think it's so cool to be able to efficiently get two very different prints from the same process. This was the one obviously that was on the bottom. You can see where the areas of the rust pulled, but I was really excited to see how much they stayed. If they rub off, then you know that it didn't stick. But this all stuck around. So I got a really beautiful result. And then here is what I guess I'll call as the ghost print from the top. And you don't get as much of that darker color. So you get these really nice sort of halos, but they really look beautiful next to each other. Here's the same with these two. You can see that this was the one that was on the bottom. This was the one that was on the top. I was surprised again that I got so much rust that stayed on the paper even beyond the prints themselves. So if you wanted to keep it to where it was more just the print, you would need to use less of the vinegar for sure. So this is where all the vinegar was pulling up. But you can see how that also allowed it to attach to the paper really nicely. So again, those two pieces together look beautiful. And then this was the top piece where we put those larger nails. I actually ended up spraying this one more time in the morning because there wasn't a lot of printing going on but look at that delicate line that i got there with almost no halo and i think it looks really beautiful with for example this one which you can really see the actual nail itself it's a lighter sort of abstraction but i also really enjoy how that turned out in any event, I'm pretty happy with this and I definitely would suggest you giving it a try if you've got some rusty bits around. Well, I just loved how it turned out. I'm telling you that I never expected to be that interested in rust dyeing or rust printing. And it just goes to show that the more time you spend exploring, you might uncover something completely unexpected that really inspires you. Next week on Color Quest, let's keep looking at rust. This time, instead of paper, let's see what it does with textile, with the same pieces, and see what kind of beauty they will bring in that realm. Have a wonderful week, and I can't wait to see you here next Friday. I'm just gonna mix it up here. I'm gonna eyeball it because honestly it doesn't. I'm just gonna.